Welcome to the You Need More Money podcast. I'm your host, Matt Monero, where I come to you each and every week from my studio in Dallas, Texas. Chasing boring. Sounds strange, doesn't it? The, the chasing, the pursuing, the running towards boring. It sounds so boring, doesn't it? I mean, it does. It's boring. But that's why your business is so jacked up. You're not chasing boring. You're chasing chaos. Now, deep down, you love it. You love the freedom of chaos, the wild element that says to yourself, man, I thrive on chaos. That's why I'm an entrepreneur. I can even visualize it right now. You're, you're the captain of your ship in the middle of the storm at the bow, and you're saying, bring it on, Mother Nature. I'll take what you can give me. I thrive in the toughest of environments. Man, I know that feeling. I'm one too. I love that feeling of chaos, but it's cost me big time. I thought there had to be chaos in my life. Every day had to push as hard as possible and make everybody around me insane. I thought that's what small business and maybe business looked like, man. I actually thought that's what exciting looked like. That's what entrepreneurship looked like. And and while that mindset still exists and in some element is still important in startup phases and getting off the ground and getting your piece of the pie. It really only works in the beginning. And the longer I'm in business and the more successful the business gets, the more I realize that we don't want to be chasing chaos. We want to be chasing boring because boring and mundane is really what the middle phase of your business and certainly at scale you should be going for. And I know how crazy it sounds. Everyone is telling us a different message that we should be chasing this grind and this this chaos and this wildness of entrepreneurship. And I'm here to challenge you today that that is wrong. We should, at a certain point in our business, Outside a startup phase, we should. And what is outside a startup phase? The minute you start to hire people, you should start to be chasing boring and not chasing chaos. Look, in my marriage, it made the rocker crazy. In the beginning, it was fun, right? Oh, man, I married a real crazy guy. This guy wants something new and different every single day. You never know what's going to come out of his mouth. But as soon as the three Ninos were born, trust me, the rocker switched. She's like, bring me stability, man. You can leave that chaos to yourself. She often tells me, she says, that sounds like a you problem, not a me problem. Certainly not a we problem. That chaos that lives in all of us as entrepreneurs at some point has to be tempered because great businesses do not thrive on chaos. They thrive on consistency and the rhythmic heartbeat that makes the people inside of it feel secure versus insecure. Now, I'll give you a couple stories on today's podcast. The first one connects to, once again, this fitness journey that I'm on, which, to be perfectly frank with you, um, we have adjusted, me and my trainer Blevins have adjusted, and we're, we're doing this very heavy weightlifting now to put on some size and some muscle, and I'm eating more calories than I had when I lost the first 50 plus pounds. And that's a weird thing for me to be taking in these more calories. In fact, to tell you the truth, I really don't like it. I kind of like the feeling of being on limited calories, but if we're trying to put on muscle, we got to eat. But what's funny is what I'm eating is boring. And I'm like, where's where where's the where where where's the specialty, man? Where's the where's the newness in this food? And he's like, well, what makes you think you're supposed to have that? And I'm like, well, cuz man, I want some variety. And he's like, yeah, but when you had variety, you got fat. That's why you got fat, because you were looking for the variety, man. Breakfast had to be one thing, and lunch had to be something else, and dinner had to be something else, and oh my goodness, what's for dessert tonight? Apple pie or mousse? Chocolate mousse. 
Man, that's not how you win when you're losing weight. You know how you win when you're losing weight? And I'm on the keto program, so oatmeal is not even part of it. But guess what? Today is plain oatmeal, and tomorrow I'm really going to spruce it up, man. I'm going to put four blueberries in my oatmeal. That's sprucing it up. The point is, success is not connected often to chaos. It's actually much more connected to boring to consistency, to rhythmic actions, to a heartbeat that is consistent, not a heartbeat that's a damn heart attack. Here's why, there's five reasons why consistency and boring is better when your business is at scale or above scale than the chaos. Number one reason, your customers want consistency within their customer experience. Dude, they want to know what they're getting. Hell, you ain't going to go to the to the hairstylist that cuts your hair different every time, right? You're going to go to the hairstylist that gives you the cut that you want because it makes you look the best. If you go to her or him on a Monday and they cut your hair one way and you like it, and then you go back one month later on a Monday and they don't give you the same haircut, you ain't going back. You want consistency in the customer experience, and that's what your customers are looking for. So stop with the chaos and these different versions of it, figure it out and give it consistently to the customer base. Now, here's where it gets really important. This is where it gets a little bit insightful. Your employees want that consistency too. Man, you're afraid as the entrepreneur. You're like, well, doesn't everybody want chaos just like me? Doesn't everybody want it to be different? I mean, that's why I'm an entrepreneur, right? I get to do different shit every day. I get the freedom, right? The freedom of business. Well, maybe it is for you, but that's not the way most of your employees think. In fact, they want to be pleased and happy with their job, and they get that feeling through the consistency. The example that is required of them, the expectation that they get to achieve and deliver on over and over and over, that's how you get happiness out of your staff. In fact, when you deliver that chaos to them, they get very nervous and unhappy and unsettled. I was just at the event at MIT two weeks ago now called Gathering of Titans, fantastic event. And one of the speakers got up there and she said, she spoke and she talked about something I thought was really interesting. She said that that you as the entrepreneur do not understand the power that you have within your employees, that your employees are having meetings about you that you don't even think they're having. They're talking about you a lot. And you as the shiny ball chaser entrepreneur don't understand what's going on in these meetings. They're talking about, are we doing a good job or is this freaking lunatic going to fire our ass? And you need to wake up and be far more sensitive to understand that the whimsical nature of you as a chaotic entrepreneur is very detrimental to your organization and to the happiness and consistency and stability of your employee base. Number three, you want, cha- you want simplicity rather than chaos because you want to be able to predict the revenue and profitability of the organization. You just need to know, can I trust the organization is operating at a rhythmic heartbeat at a thump, 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 thump that produces the right amount of revenue and profitability? Number four, the buyer that may buy your business has no interest in buying your crazy ass. Your chaos is not adding value to your business. In fact, it's deteriorating value. The buyer wants a consistent money machine that spits out a consistent token. So when you're getting caught up and I've got to do all this stuff, I got to keep it fresh, I got to keep it alive, I want you to understand it's hurting the actual value and saleability of your business. And lastly, for for this five-point checklist, number five, what you fear is not actually true. You fear that you have to find new ways, that the methods have to be tested, that trying new shit and playing at full tilt every day is what you have to do. Otherwise, you're going to lose everything. And in reality, the opposite is true. Now, if you want to be that guy that just has to push the needle all the time for chaos, I actually support you. But here's what you got to do. You got to quarantine yourself. You literally have to put yourself into a room, build a small team and work on your crazy all by yourselves. 
it cannot be part of the big theme of the company and the organization. It has to be isolated and quarantined so you guys can test and do all your crazy shit without impacting the business. So you can perfect it, get it right, and then you can plug in your new ideas. But what most of us as the leaders of businesses do and as entrepreneurs is worth, we think everybody's interested in the same shit that we are. And the reality is most are not. So when we bring that chaotic idea to the table, on Monday, it throws people off and we think everybody loves us for it. Nothing could be further from the truth. Now let's talk about how chasing boring versus chasing chaos works in your money situation. I can remember sitting at my desk and people would tell me about the deals that they're getting pitched, that they're looking at. I remember saying, man, how come nobody pitches me deals? I never get a deal pitched to me. And what I began to realize as I started to look introspectively and understand why am I not getting these deals, it was because I didn't have a network of people that were connected to deals. So I started working on my network. And now I get pitched a lot of deals, like a lot of deals come across my desk. In fact, last week I just got pitched this deal. I was in LA and some guy wanted to have lunch with me and he pitched me this deal on a company that... um, I'm not going to mention the name of the company because if they hit, I'll look real stupid that I said no to the deal. Um, And if they don't hit, who knows, maybe he holds it against me down the road. But the fact of the matter is, I like the business. I actually like the problem that the business solves, but I hate the valuation. The company over the last three years has done a million dollars in sales aggregate total over three years, and they're positioning their offering in a private equity situation as $18 million valuation. Well, listen, if you've done a million bucks over the last three years and you think the company's worth 18 million bucks, that to me is a pure speculative private inve- private equity or maybe even an angel type investment. I'm looking for boring with my investments. I already got enough private equity and a couple angel deals that have yet to pay off. Now, I think the private equity deal will pay off big here soon, but the angels are really risky money. That was putting six-figure investments into companies that maybe will play out. I don't know, but right now, I ain't chasing those deals. I'm chasing boring, and that boring to me is real estate. Where do I get my hands on more real estate? Now, I want to be crystal clear about something. Because most entrepreneurs are going to go the wrong direction on this. You're going to think that when I say boring, I mean small. And I mean not exciting. That is not what I mean by it. I mean not chaotic. That's what I mean. So, for example, I'm not looking for shiny ball moments that come when um, you're buying Bitcoin or you're buy, you're going into the CBD business or or you get a great stock tip on the golf course from somebody. That to me is shiny ball moments. That's chaotic. I'm looking for stuff that I can put my money into, make real deep investments and get paid over the long term. I'm looking for boring money. I ain't looking for chaotic money. I already got enough of those things. And I'm challenging you when it comes to your money to stop chasing the shiny balls and go to the simplistic, boring, stable stuff. Neither of those adjectives are connected to low returns, although some people might argue that, or small investments. That's not what I'm saying. Hell, I'm going to put seven figures into some real estate stuff that I'm doing, and it's going to pay probably eight or 9% a year over the long haul. I'll get the appreciation, the tax benefit, and the cash flow. That doesn't sound like not risky or, um, or not positive. It just ain't chaotic. So the message for today is keep your crazy to yourself. Get a handle on yourself, man. Look around. See what's happening when you're wearing your crazy on your sleeve. And I love crazy, man. I'm talking, I love batshit crazy. Crazier the better for me. I need some of it in my life. But when it comes to your business and your money, I want you to quarantine your crazy. I want you to challenge your company and the people within your company to actually operate not with a crazy and chaotic heartbeat, but a mundane heartbeat. Hell, maybe even a boring heartbeat. I'll see y'all down the road.